Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today we're going to be doing one of your most requested songs ever, which is Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner as performed by Iron Maiden. This is To Poetry by Samuel Coleridge. I believe he wrote it in 1789. I think that's the right date. And it's about a sailor who's just returned from a long journey. And this is a fairly long poem and song too, by the way. So it's going to be, I think, about 14 minutes of music, so a lot of analysis. You might want to grab a drink before we get started. Now, this is also going to be very different from my first hearing of Iron Maiden. It will be my second time hearing them ever. The first time was Hallowed Be Thy Name, and I think that performance was from 2008. Many of you specifically requested that I listen to some young Bruce Dickinson. So this performance is going to be taken from 1985 from a performance in Long Beach, California. So this performance is actually from a little bit before I was born. Whew. All right, let's get to it. The rhyme of the ancient mariner, if you dare. <laughs> Oh, right away, just off the bat, he's got such great mouth movement. <laughs> I know, I know it's such a weird thing to geek out about, but his enunciation is just fantastic. A lot of people, when they're working on pattern or fast things, like I am the very, ma I am the very model of a modern major general, for example, um, they'll keep their mouth a little bit more closed. I am the very model of a modern major general. And that's how a lot of tongue twisters are performed as well. But when you're singing and you need to get a lot more sound out, it's better to open your mouth more. So uh, you can tell his mouth is really open, but he's still working super fast, really, really, really active mouth to give us all of those words. It's fantastic. Let's go back and appreciate that a little bit more. Uh, it's it's also fascinating to me because a lot of times that much uh, aggression in enunciation uh, might disrupt a vocal line, um, but he still has a really smooth line and it just sounds like he's like just pumping out the sound like crazy, but able to put that really crisp and active enunciation on top without any of the sound wave wavering essentially. Um, so it's just going very well. Part of that might be because of his magnificent stance here. This uh, one leg up, it's one of the best ways to sing, guys. Uh, there's things it can like help your pelvis tilt a little bit under so it can uh, send your breathing down a little bit further. Um, you want to get all the way down to almost like these pelvic floor muscles for really deep singing support. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, but I mean, he's also just so active in every single way. So I feel like he's giving so much energy into that vocal line that even though he's got amazing articulation, it couldn't possibly disrupt his amazing vocal line. Was a really cool uh, guitar lick there. Uh, that was it was like very catchy. Um, I like it when there, there's like really melodic guitar licks that make you be like, oh yeah, that was some nice ear candy right there. Um, his little bit of adding a little bit of scream into the vocal line there was powerful. Really, really powerful. I liked it. Ah. Ooh, more of the guitar lick I like. Tales, 
I also love hearing the bits of vibrato he's adding in here. This is, uh, it's a pretty even vibrato, definitely intentional when he wants it. A lot of times um, when you hear somebody who's just like pushing a ton of sound out the whole time, it can be hard for them to learn uh, vibrato. Vibrato is actually a relaxation, periodic relaxation of muscles in your neck. Um, you can manufacture it by doing things like gospel jaw where you're like, ah, right? <laughs> Uh, but that's not that's not the best way to do it. That actually just adds more tension. It's not a great thing. Um, if you learn that relaxed vibrato, uh, they've done studies where they see it adds to more resonance in the tone, uh, and it definitely can add more vulnerability. Um, it, it's just better tone quality overall. So it's really great to see this because it makes me also know that he is able to back up uh, or back off enough to give it that nice rounder tone and vibrato. I feel like the albatross is really intense. <laughs> it's, a, it's like albatross moment. Made me think that he was actually he he does sing this way. It feels like he's almost an orator, more of like somebody from a Shakespearean play delivering that just happens to have the strong pitch. And of course he sings more sustained notes, but he also has been tossing a bunch of them off where it's like, hey, hey, and he goes up to the pitch he wants, but he doesn't necessarily hover there and sustain it as long. So it does feel in some ways like he's in a Shakespearean play. And I loved the expression of the albatross. It really made it stick out to me like, ah, here's a character, cool. Ah, fantastic. Let's go back and listen to that. That was neat. Oh, cool. Huh. I hear so much desperation in his sound too. I'm going to go back uh, a little bit to a poem that I have over here, uh, or the lyrics. The Albatross begins with its vengeance, a terrible curse, a thirst has begun. His shipmates blame bad luck on the mariner about his neck. The dead bird is hung and the curse goes on and on at sea and the thirst goes on and on for them and me. Oh, yeah. This feels terrible and dangerous and desperate. And you hear that in his voice and it's like desperation almost to get out of the situation. Mmm, mmm, very interesting, very interesting tone quality and musical choices, guys. Okay, two things. Uh, let's go back and look at, see if I can get a still of him. Uh, you can kind of, uh, here you go. It looks like he has like three horses between his legs. <laughs> the stance is so wide, it's insane. Uh, that's awesome. Again, that stance is really helping him to keep his voice in the stage. I don't know if that's something he thought about, um, but it sure helps. And looking at his career, knowing that they have performed for so many years, in fact, I'd almost say that they even had more energy in 2008 on stage than they did in this 1985. So 23 years later, I think they had even more energy. That's insane. That's insane. Most people will be exhausted from touring that much and they are not at all. Uh, this, uh, this hugely wide stance again helps you get that breath really down low. 
Uh, so I love seeing that. Um, but also I was hearing, and in this phrase in particular, there's so much up and down and he's just pushing out the sound the whole time. It's just this wall of sound. Um, I feel like if blast beats were sung, maybe that would be Bruce Dickinson. Uh, so getting that sound out and also continuing it through lower notes. So it's not just as higher notes popping out and like being extra loud. Like it's so much sound through that whole tube. Uh, I think that must be possible partly because of his great low support. Uh, it Otherwise it would be just yelling, but instead it's sustained and supported. So it's singing. <laughs> Very small difference between singing and yelling sometimes. Such a good expression. And very interesting choice to yell out water, like he hated it. You know, some people would think like, oh, water, I'm going to drink. But no, this is like the water coming in on the ship. Water, water everywhere. Uh, but not any drop to drink. So they can't drink any of the water. It's like a water that they hate. And you hear that in his expression of those words. I like this guitar lick. There goes the mariner, there comes the ship of the lake. How can she sail with the wind and the sound of the day? Mm -hmm. So we have some alternating time signatures here. Um, I think we've got, I think we've got like a 3-4 and a 4-4 four, four perhaps. Um... So let's check this out. So I'm gonna go back to, ah, oh, this is a good spot because he's in his horse, horse dance. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this is four, four right now. One, two, three, four. So still in four, four right now. That's where it changes. And that's really interesting because Bruce is actually the person that's changing it there. Oh, so usually the drummer will be the person that initiates any sort of time signature shift. And right here we get a feeling of three. So I think it's in three, four. Let's check it out. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Oh, I went back a little too far, sorry. Jesus. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And it, okay, so uh, Bruce is in three four, and then the band is in four four. I'll count that out. One two three 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 four one two three four one two three 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 four one two three four, and then it stays in four four. That's cool. Hmm. My brain is still stuck in the um, in that tempo, sh uh, the time signature shifting. I'm gonna hop over to the lyrics again because part of me thinks that they might have initiated that time signature from the rhythm of the words, which would be really cool and really smart. Um, Anytime I'm talking to somebody about writing for voice, I always talk about finding the natural rhythm of the words and then just elongating that. So, water, water, everywhere, not a drop to drink. There calls the mariner, there comes a ship over the line. But how can she sail with no wind in her sails and no tithe? Yeah, it definitely has to do with the meter of the speaking words. There calls the mariner, there comes a ship over the line. So you can feel that there's a feeling of three, four actually built into the original poem. That's really cool. I'm glad that they respected that and even uh, enhanced it by using time signatures. Okay, I'm gonna go back because I was still in that zone while they were going. Oh. There we go. The water. So this is a return.
return to that same time signature pattern now. I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I really enjoyed the elongated moments there where he held the notes out longer and added some more of that vibrato there. Again, it's showing that he is very versatile. He's able to extend it or it'll just like plow you over with tons of different words. I guess I'm summing this so much. I'm gonna have to let it go for longer. I know this is a really, really long a song. So, okay. I promise to stop less after this moment. But the way he keeps raising his arm, uh, it's actually it's actually another thing that's really helpful for singing. And I hadn't noticed before this moment, it really looks like he's raising it while he's singing. And then he puts it back down and then initiates raising it again when he's singing. Um, this, it helps the ribs stay expanded. Uh, and confession to you, uh, I actually, when I'm in a recording booth, a lot of times I sing with my hands up because it helps keep my ribs expanded the whole time. Or sometimes it'll be just like one on the ear and another hand up. I tend to raise my right hand. He raises his left, it looks like. Anyhow, it's a really, really great strategy for singing. And uh, I love that he's actually doing it on stage. It's the kind of thing I probably wouldn't normally do in a live performance. Unless I'm laying on the ground, then usually if I'm laying on the ground in a live performance, I'll stretch one arm out to help keep those ribs expanded on the ground. Anyhow, uh, it was really cool to see that. It's like, oh, that's, he, I think he must do that on purpose. <laughs> it helps with high notes, I swear. <laughs> One of the things that I'm listening for here that would be really, I'll go back a little bit to catch it and then keep playing. Listen, um, there's a subdivision of three in the time signature. So it would actually make it instead of four, four at this point, it would be 12, eight. So you feel one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but you feel four big beats overall. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, oh, one, two, three, 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 one, two. actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's hard to say that fast. Uh, let's go back and catch it a bit. Oh, and now we're gonna have a big shift. Just so you know, when you have that kind of 12-8 uh, or 6-8, anytime you have an eight below on a time signature, it often is used to denote waves in a C, kind of that lull, which is very suiting to this text for sure. Um, or it can also uh, be used for riding sequences, like galloping. <laughs> so I also felt that feeling for sure. And that goes with his horse dance. Hashtag horse dance. Ooh, what's this muted sound? Such a shift right now. It's kind of eerie in tone quality. And, uh, and they're using an augmented uh, chord. So if you're to talk uh, chordal structure right now, uh, I think they're using... 
Yeah. So um, they're using uh, A, C sharp, and F, or E sharp, depending on how you want to name that note, um, which is an augmented triad. That kind of sound uh, is often something that we associate as being kind of out of this world or spacey often. It's like something you might hear, uh, I think, in like the seven planets, volts. Um, uh, or just the planets. <laughs> um, so I, it definitely provides an eerie atmosphere and they're playing this over and over uh, in different, I think they might move it down to G at one point. A very, very interesting choice. This is totally different from anything else that they've played before. And the, it's all like very spacey kind of synthy sound too. And of course there's fog. Do not forget the fog. Again, it feels very eerie. as well. This almost feels like something um, from Pirates of the Caribbean. Like I feel like I'm inside the ride almost in Disneyland. Um, wow, with the creaking. Uh, it, it sounds like maybe shipwreck. And let's see, uh, one after one by the star dogged moan, too quick for groaner sigh. He turned his face with a ghastly pang and cursed with his eye. Four times fifty living men and I heard nor sigh nor groan. The heavy thump of lifeless on they dropped down one by one. Wow, like all of these guys are dying is what's happening right now. And the, oh, wow, this is so creepy, a spooky. I, and the sound of Bruce's voice there, I love that he decided not to sing this and instead speak it, like kind of half whisper it in this fry. It is, it's just... Uh, it provides so much more ambiance that way. I love the way that they've composed around this poem. It's really cool. <sighs> so we're reversing that triad now, so coming from top down. Oh! Really good to note we haven't had any really strong beat at this point, which gives it a feeling of almost like losing sense of time here. And he's using symbols, um, which like, are lacking that uh, definitive beat as well. They're really good for spells. The way that it continues to go on and it's shifting. So it's it's out of the augmented triad at this point. At first it was doing that and now it's just hanging out in a D minor. And it's going between D and C minor a bunch there. Um, so it's just alternating between these two uh, chords and going back and forth and back and forth rather than feeling like there's any sense of home or like any perfect cadence, that gives us a feeling of almost uh, drifting, drifting aimlessly, which I think is what they're going for. Drifting or feeling lost um, or like uh, just overwhelmed. Like again, that sense of no time. It's so fascinating how they've made this uh, ambiance surrounding the lyrics. It's just great. and going out of it now then. It, 
this feels like like we're almost like at the beginning of an inspirational movie or something or like an inspirational montage like ah but everything's gonna be fine uh <laughs> i liked that shit was good and obviously bruce coming back in and with this sort of powerful voice it made so much sense for him to not sing in the previous part it it wasn't a moment of power for the character so having the narration be in words instead i loved that it feels like this is almost like a three scene uh uh work of art i want to say opera but it's not really opera uh, it feels like um like there are three scenes in this particular act of music essentially uh also it, just a little more time signature nerdiness uh they're doing one two three one two three one two one two three one two three one two in the instruments which is exciting because instead of having the extra ending three it cuts it off and goes right back to the first so one two three one two three one two one two like that makes you feel like oh i just got cut off which makes you really want the you it uh creates a feeling of wanting it to continue of more anticipation <laughs> oh, that was really cool guys <laughs> Hey, I'm up. Along with the sea creatures, but they lived on, so did he. Yeah, the mariner lived. And by the light of the moon, he prays for their mutiny. That was so cool how he didn't... Oh, man, we still have so far to go. Oh, I keep sobbing it so much. Um, I like the way he went up to the top note and then kind of... What was the word? Doom? I, I thought it was doom. It is doom. He prays for their beauty, not doom. Uh, with heart, he blesses them. Ah. So it's like... Um, the mariner wished he would die along with the sea creatures, but it lived on, and so did he. So he's going to keep on going. And he finds beauty in them still, which is fascinating. So listen, the way he expresses doom, he goes up, he again has that vibrato in his voice and he lets it slide down a little bit with like a teeny bit of a gasp afterwards that shows that desperation, maybe that pain, but uh, it still sounds like a longing to live. He sounds insane. Seriously, insane. Wait, what's the word that he's saying that on? I couldn't figure it out. Then down in falls comes the rain. Oh, so that makes sense. It's coming, it's falling. Um, oh, but it's talking about the albatross falling from his neck too, sinks down the lead into the sea. Then down in falls comes the rain. Oh, man. More rain on the sea. Oof. Uh, I will not pretend to be a guitar pro here. So I think that what they're doing is awesome. I just can't give you like a super deep professional analysis of it uh, in the same way I can talk about singing. But what I can talk about is the fact that Bruce is up on like the top of the stage. I saw him like put his mic in the stand. He, I wonder how he stays hydrated. <laughs> silly, silly question for some people, but he's been sweating so much. He's been so active. He's been running around. Like, how does he keep his voice hydrated during a show like this? How many bottles of water must he go through? Uh, legit question. If you guys know, let me know. Ooh, nice use of pedal.
There's that camaraderie I was talking about earlier in the video. You can really feel it right here. <laughs> you have to got the drums. <gasps> Helping play the drums. Uh, um, okay, I saw this in How Would Be It, my name, where he, like, takes the crowd and, like, makes them yell at certain times. I didn't realize that was a thing that he did, because he just did it here, like, in exactly the same way where he was, like, cut off. I was like, no, 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 yell at her. Cut off. Yell at her. Uh, that's really cool. So that way the crowd actually is, is trained to do this. He's trained them. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Um, also, all of these guys have really incredible hair. Just gotta put that out there. Really incredible. So much energy. Nice tempo shift. Okay, so this is the same, uh, I believe that this is the same melody that he sang at the beginning of the song. Um, I don't need to check the words. I know it's the same melody. So it sounds like they've kind of come full circle at this point, which is really good to note structure-wise. I hear no deterioration in Bruce's voice whatsoever at this point. Sometimes when somebody's singing for a really long time, you start to hear the voice go down or like need to take a little break between songs at least. I hear no problem whatsoever in his voice. It just sounds like it's powering through with tons of great support. much energy still it's crazy I can't like I wonder what it would have been like to be his mom like did he have that much energy as a kid and how hard was he to raise then like that was wow uh he's got so much he feels like to me like he's almost like a six-year-old on stage he's just able to like run go bam 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 and still keep going the whole time it's just fantastic really 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 fantastic um I was thinking to myself, he doesn't necessarily have what I would consider like a, the most beautiful tone. It just has incredible power. It feels like it's a force to deal with. Uh, and I, that is so impressive to me. And the fact that he can mold that force that's just enorm enormous to be able to mold that into really distinct words as fast as he does is I'm... I'm still drooling over his enunciation, is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> I love the slides he does in there to express words. Oh, 
Uh, that was that was a cool ending. That was a very sudden ending. Um, the sound, it's almost sounded like at the end he was um, going for something a little bit ethnic in tone quality. And uh, it looked like they had a big gong back there um, that they were um, using some soft oh, too. Whoa. I want to catch that ending one more time. I feel like it reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. Almost like Prince of Egypt somehow. What a cool song to actually just get to dig deep into and analyze. I can absolutely see why these guys are one of the fathers of metal. Getting to hear this sort of powerful voice just charge through is incredible. I love the epic story that's involved. It's really, really fascinating to hear how they set these different parts of the poem to music. I love what they did with time signatures. Really, I love hearing um, various alterations in time signatures throughout a piece like this, especially if it's a very long piece. I really want um, a different feeling in the music to occur, and a time signature is one of the best ways to bring about that different feeling. Uh, but the different uh, colors that they looked for, especially in that kind of creepy part, wow, what a cool, cool different act or scene to add to the piece that really expressed what was happening in the poem. I loved that. And then I loved hearing how Bruce was going through and uh, different slides, different kinds of screams at different moments, tossing off uh, words or choosing to sustain them. I thought that was fascinating. And I feel like if we had I don't know, 24 hours maybe, then we could actually go back in and look at each one of his choices and understand, oh, he, he decided to do it this way because it had this word behind it. It just shows so much thoughtfulness in this composition overall. And also a really uh, incredible level of musicianship because somebody can't make those choices if they don't have the skills to be able to even consider them in the first place. So really, really delightful. Thank you, everyone, for this fantastic recommendation. I know this has been a long video. Thank you for sticking with me the, throughout the whole thing. If you guys want to do more recommendations, please put those below this video in the comments. That's where we look for them and tally them up. And also uh, come and say hello to me sometime in premieres on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. If you don't want to miss one of those, hit subscribe and turn on the notifications. And you can find me on Patreon or at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.